I want to begin today with a question for you all. What is true prosperity? And it's not a rhetorical question. Really think about it. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think about prosperity? I bet it has a green color, doesn't it? Most of us probably think of money as prosperity. If not, you might think prosperity involves vacation homes or fancy dining. Or perhaps more modestly, prosperity could simply be financial security for your family. But is true prosperity, the kind that really matters, simply having money, simply having our physical needs met? You know, one of the things I love so much about Unity teachings is the depth of wisdom it has on the real meaning of prosperity. The kind that counts. The kind that really leads to well-being. So today, I want to dive into some of those unity teachings. This teaching has changed my life, and I know it will change yours as well if you give it a try. So let's start with what it is. Here's Eric Butterworth from the Forward to Spiritual Economics. Considered in the broadest sense, prosperity is spiritual well-being. This involves the whole experience of healing life, satisfying love, abiding peace and harmony, as well as a sufficiency of every good thing. So yes, prosperity includes a sufficiency of every good thing, which includes money. Prosperity means we have all the necessary things to support us as we need them. But in the broadest sense, prosperity is much more than that. It's a satisfying life, a life full of harmony and joy. Our next question must be then, what brings you a satisfying life? What brings you real prosperity? Is that money? Money can certainly help. I'm not going to deny that. One of the most favorite experiences in my life is a trip I took to Rome when I was in college. I definitely felt prosperous being able to travel like that. But what brought the prosperity for me in that trip? Was it the sightseeing? Was it the museums of Renaissance art or the real Italian cuisine? For me, it was the fellowship. It was the wonderful people I took the trip with and the things we did together, the growing and learning we did together. So what brings that for me now in my life is this community. I find satisfying friendships here. I find spiritual growth and development here. When I'm here, I feel spiritual well-being. And I hope you do too. That's the purpose of spiritual community. When we're talking about prosperity, many of us like to talk about the law of attraction. And that's a good thing to know about. We've used that here in this community. Law of attraction is the idea that thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. Charles Fillmore says, all conditions and circumstances and affairs and body are attracted to us according with the thoughts we hold steadily in consciousness. That's from the revealing word. So here's an example. These last few months, all of us have been holding in consciousness the idea of attracting our right and perfect spiritual leader. We prayed every week. Many of us prayed individually. The chaplains prayed together. I know I prayed with people one-on-one -on, -one on the phone over and over. And it worked. Reverend Paul's going to start with us in just a couple weeks. That's something to be celebrated. So we know the law of attraction works on the community level. But I want to talk about the other side of that process. Knowing the truth and holding the high watch is all well and good, but what else do we have to do? We have to prime the pump. We have to start the flow, and we have to move our feet. It's not enough to know the truth. We must use the truth we know. I keep t teaching about that. That's through my favorite thing, the fifth unity principle. But it's so important because unity is a practical spirituality. It's meant to be used. So let's talk about the law of giving. 
right there in The Revealing Word when Charles Fillmore talks about the law of attraction. He also talks about the law of giving. The law of giving and receiving is the law of substance that equalizes all things. To realize and maintain divine order, substance must have both an inlet and an outlet. It must be kept moving. Now, we don't hear about that one as much, do we? But it's so essential. That's how prosperity comes into our lives. That's how we work for it. So here's an example from my own life. Many of you know I'm working towards credentialing as a New Thought minister, and I'm nearly there with Anton, which is an interfaith New Thought organization. But my chosen path is unity. My chosen path is unity. And I would eventually like to earn unity credentialing as well. The thing is, however, you have to start over. It doesn't matter what you've learned. You have, with unity, you have to do it all over again. So a couple years ago, I really made the determination that this is what I want to do. I'm ready to do this. And I began to start my studies with unity in earnest. And then I had this bill. $600 for my first course of studies. And then I started thinking, can I really afford this? Why am I doing this right now? I've already taken some of this court teaching. Do I have to do it again? But I knew the truth in the situation. I knew that unity was my path. I knew I was being guided towards doing this. And I knew that God would provide a way to make this happen. So I paid that bill immediately, immediately. And then that very same week, I had a check in the mail show up for $600 from an unexpected source. Bank error in my favor. What a coincidence, right? But I know it's not a coincidence. I knew it was my demonstration. When you take that next step, when you stop just claiming your prosperity, affirming it, and faithfully demonstrate it, that's when the flow starts. The moment you demonstrate, the flow starts. That's spiritual law. That's how it happens. In my case, I had the demonstration of money, the unexpected abundance, yes. But I also had the teaching. I got to take the class. I got to meet the wonderful people and deepen my unity knowledge. So my prosperity investment was multiplied. When you give, you can't ever really give something away, not when you're doing it faithfully or spiritual purpose. When you give to something or someone you care about freely and generously, it will come back to you, multiplied. Now, I want to be clear here. I'm not saying every time I've paid for tuition, I've had a check show up at the bail. <laughs> That's not the point here. That's magical thinking, and we're not doing that. We're talking about spiritual law, okay? We're talking about the principle. But I will say, and I am 100% sincere about this, I have never failed to have the resources I needed for my studies as I've needed them, exactly as I've needed them. It's always been there. So, what's my point? Why am I sharing with you all my story of how I came to understand the real nature of prosperity? The real nature of giving? Because we have a choice right now to demonstrate prosperity in support of our spiritual community. Now, I know many of you are new or fairly new to this community. Less than half of you have called this your spiritual home for more than two years. And it can take people time to really start giving to a community. I understand that, okay? Maybe you take a look around at this beautiful space, you hear the beautiful music we do, and everything we do and you think that we don't need your money. Well, let me be the one to tell you we have real need of it right now. Maybe you're waiting to be asked to support this community. Well, I'm willing to be the one to ask you right now. Maybe you think 
a 10 or $20 donation is enough to support this space. Well, I'm going to be the one to level with you that it's not. There are a handful of people who do more than their fair share to support this community. And they have committed to doing some heavy lifting here as well, but they can't do it alone. We all have to do our part. Can you please show the video now? All right, take a look at our roof. Really take a look at our roof here. Look at those patches. It's more patched than roof at this point. It looks like a quilt, right? We are behind, way behind, on taking care of the physical space we call home. So all of the wonderful donations that you give, that we all give, supports us to support this community, take care of the Sunday celebration, our wonderful music, all the services and events we do, but it does not take care of our building. It does not take care of our building. We have deferred the maintenance for too long. So let me tell you how we got to this point. A few years ago, the board and the people here at the time noticed we had a couple leaks, and they said, you know, the time is right to do a capital campaign to support this community. And then COVID happened, and the lockdowns. And this community, this building was closed practically for over a year. And then when we just started coming back, our spiritual leader passed away, and we found ourselves in transition. Then we had a transitional minister who helped keep things going and keep us all together, but could not take on a project like this we had other priorities at the time. We had healing to do. And this community has stayed together. Through all of these transitions, we've stayed together, and we've actually grown. But this roof held up with some patching for five more years while we knew it needed replacing. It has given us protection through all these turbulent times, and we bless it and thank it for keeping us safe, but it's time. It's time to act now. And the roof is the first step because we also need new AC units. Can you all hear that back there? It sounds like it's grinding. Okay. We need hurricane windows. Lots of things need to be done that have been deferred too long. So the total ask, the total campaign, and we have two years to do this, we have a total campaign for the maintenance and refurbishment of all the things that need to be done for this community is $250,000 over the next two years we have to raise. Once we've gotten, that's enough to take care of all the things that have to be done within the next few years. And once we get to that, we can put a capital campaign behind us. But right now, Many of you saw our GoFundMe, and we put it for $100,000 because that takes care of the roof. That takes care of the roof. We have to take care of the roof this year. We're going to do everything, every avenue, every aspect, everything we can do to get to that whole amount, but we need the 100000 up front. We have to do the roof this year. Just this week, with all this rain we had, we had three new leaks sprout. We've got blue tarps here covering seats. We've got con caution tape stopping you from coming in the front door because the roof is falling down on people. You can see uh, we already went past it. You saw our, um, our wonderful community service team had to come in during the week and scoop up all the debris that fell apart. And we have another one starting at Fellowship Hall. So we have to take care of it this year. So our choice is clear. If we want to remain in this space, we have to say yes we have to faithfully demonstrate our prosperity. Now, maybe we don't want to remain. Lots of new thought churches in the area have closed or scaled back in recent years. We have members in our church who used to go to Unity of Hollywood, which doesn't exist anymore. We have members of our church who used to go to Bridges of Wellness, which doesn't exist anymore. It's United Metaphysical Chapel of South Florida, which doesn't exist anymore. All of these new thought centers are gone now. We could be one of them. 
Or we could say yes. We could say yes to the community and the fellowship. Say yes to making sure that progressive, positive, practical spirituality remains for other seekers in South Florida. Think of what unity meant to you when you came the first time, and imagine if it wasn't there. So I'm inviting you to reflect, really reflect on the value of our community. Is it worth supporting? And will you say yes? And please, please dig deep because now is the time. Now, if you really cannot afford it, I understand. Not everyone can donate $1,000 as much as we'd like to. But we can all do something. We can afford something. So I invite every person here and every person online to prayerfully consider what they can afford and give something, anything. This is a QR code. It takes you right to our GoFundMe. You can donate right now. And please share the campaign. The whole reason we did this on GoFundMe is because it's a crowdfunding platform. Okay, We have over 2,000 people that like our Facebook page, that people that have come to our church, that like our community, that come occasionally, or maybe they watch online. They care about us, and they need to have the opportunity to support. We've already had it. A few of those people have noticed it and have supported people that you don't see here every Sunday. So people will support us if we ask, so we're just asking. And when you see people sharing, like it, comment, all that stuff helps spread the word further. Your donation of any amount is an affirmation for your support of our community. It is starting the flow of prosperity, real prosperity, real joy, real connection in your life. And you will find your donation will come back to you multiplied. And so now, this is not about me. This is not just about me. I'm here speaking, but I'm doing this on behalf of the fundraising committee and on behalf of many members in our community who feel the same way. So I'm going to invite a few of them to share with you why I invite you to give as well, what this community means to them. everybody. I'm Michelle Anderson, and I'm a member of the board. I'm the board secretary right now, and I've served on many, many of the um, teams um, over the time that I've been here. This will be 10 years for me this month that I have been coming to Unity of Pompano, so I feel like an old timer for the... <laughs> I'm an old timer now. Um, I can relate to so many things that Nicholas was talking about. I remember the first day that I walked in here. I was looking for community. I was longing for sisterhood. And I walked in here and I felt like, wow, there's, in my mind, I was like, there's possibility here. <laughs> you know. And um, I was not a person who jumped in automatically with both feet. but over time, it even took me a while just to walk into uh, Fellowship Hall because I was by myself and didn't know anybody. But over time, you know, I started taking classes. I served on different um, teams that we had here. And I remember I took my first prosperity class when I was feeling the complete opposite of prosperity. <laughs> Talking about money made me super uncomfortable. Sitting in that class after the first class, I, was, <laughs> I felt like, uh, I don't know if I'm going to come back here or not, <laughs> because I felt so uncomfortable with it. But I also had this thought of, and I don't know how you feel, but I want to support whatever supports me. And the things that Nicholas was talking about, even the songs this morning, he talked about feeling uplifted and joyful. To me, that's abundance. All of the opportunities that I've had to learn, to grow, that's abundance. My friendships that I have with everybody, the love that I feel, that's abundance. And here's what's interesting. So when I first 
uh, when I first went to that prosperity class, I didn't grow up in a um, religious community that talked about tithing, so I didn't really know about it. But I, I couldn't, you know, it's like tithe 10%. And that wasn't something that I could do, but I started with what I could do. And it's really interesting because over time, just by releasing that fear and supporting the, I supported my community, all of that really did come back to me. And that abundance, that giving and receiving was something that um, has become a part of my life and I joyfully support this community. Great, thank you so much. And now let's hear from Miss Peggy, the one who did our recovery this week. Hi, I'm Peggy Smith. Oh. Hi, I'm Peggy Smith, and I've been here a long time, as you know. As I think about the work of this church, this is God's church. So as it is God's church, so within, so without. So we open our purses, our pockets, and we give generously because we love this building. We love each other as we come from love. This is what makes the world go round. So we think about the building with no roof, no church. So, we know that God is our source and we give freely and honestly because God is the source of all. Thank you. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you. This is Mary Pimino. here uh, one year now and um, we came here because we were unsatisfied with our Unity Church and we wanted to see what else was out there and we've been thrilled with this church um, it, it's taken us you know it's a slow journey and it's taken us some time um, I didn't step up until I heard about the roof because I really felt you guys wow what a community you're self supporting you you know this is this is going on this is great um, and then I heard about the roof and I said uh oh <laughs> and when Bob Wilson men mentioned, I think it was a survey last year where we had to raise $3,000, and I spoke to him afterwards, and I said, I'll, I'll make my donation. And uh, what was going to be $100, I had a bill that week, so it turned into 50 but I made my donation. Um, then I stepped up again, and... I told Peter that I wanted to join the fundraising committee. Um, I have some background. I, I've worked in nonprofits for about 20 years, mostly in accounting. So I'm more of a financial person than I am fundraising, but we've got a fundraiser on this committee. We've got a marketing person on this committee. Um, We've got Nicholas for our, our spiritual um, leadership, and um, it, it's, um, it's coming together. It's coming together. It was wonderful how we were able to put together this uh, GoFundMe, and we're hoping to reach outsiders. And um, I just wanted to add, there was um, something in the Daily Word this week that says, pray for others. And I wanted to read, centered in the goodness and grace of God in prayer, I may also do what I can to lend a helping hand. Aware the perfect outcome affirmed in prayer 
may be mani manifested through me. And um, I did make a generous donation, and I went into my IRA, and I said, I'm just doing this. And um, this is a gift of love, and um, I'm honored that I was able to do that. So thank you. Thank you, Mary. All right, just one more. Ms. Rita, also on our board, does so much around here. Good morning, everybody. I'm Rita DeRocher. I currently serve on the board with the events team. My husband and I have been ushers for, oh God, I don't know how long. Um, we got married here in 2001. Um, at the end of 2000, I walked in the door after being invited by a previous minister and felt welcomed by, by that beautiful stained glass window in the front. I would like to see it and this wonderful wood ceiling stay and be here for the next generation of Unity of Pompano attendees. I've been coming for over 20 years now, and I would like to see the church saved. Um, without a roof, like Peggy said, there will be no church. If water or wind infiltrates this building, the roof is going to go. Um, we've had water intrusion. We've had bucket brigades and all kind of stuff. I've personally been after this for 15 years to get this roof done. I would love to see it happen before I leave this earth. <laughs> um, I think we can get it done this time because we had the impetus to do it, but it takes all of us. It takes a village. If we all give whatever we can give, keep this church going and keep a roof over our head, I know I would be one that appreciates it. Thank you. All right. All right. And so, I really wanted to do that as part of our meditation today because this is not just about me. It's our whole community, our whole church. So please just join me for a moment in the spirit of prayer. Creator, you are the source and foundation of our very being. And right now, you are the foundation of our community, and also the space we call home. And we are willing, all of us are willing, to be a channel, be a channel for this divine abundance, to keep that circulation flowing. We know that whatever we give, it is towards holy purpose, towards divine purpose. We are grateful for this opportunity, and we see now that all the renovations we need to do, all of our roof, are already complete in divine line, already done. We just have to accept. We just have to take the next step to bring this truth, this reality, into expression, and we're doing that right now. And we're so grateful for this opportunity and knowing that we can do this. So it is. <laughs> 